This is the second part of a two-part video on replacing Fused Location Provider API with Fused Location Provider Client. In the first video, we took a look at this presentation and we, and we did a simple overview of what we're about to do in this video, the part two video, which is the hands-on video. So let's jump right in and see what we need to do. I have an existing application that I've written with the old strategy of using the Google API client. And we, knew one, we know one thing that we're going to need to do is simply remove the Google API client. So let's take that out because the new Fused Location Provider API uh, encapsulates a lot of this work for us. So we'll take out the Google API client and this will be really nice for seeing where we have some uh, compile issues that we now need to resolve. So. Uh, I know I typically don't like continuing with something as long as we have a red line. So I'm going to clean up as much as I can. But I also know that some of this I won't be able to clean up until I have finished using the Fuse Location Provider Client. So, okay, we take out uh, these places where we're checking to see if the Google API is available. And again, I know some more changes to come. Uh, Google API Client Connect and Google API Client Disconnect. We can remove those out of the onStart and the onStop method because we no longer need them. And we scroll on down and I think uh, this one, okay, so the not null and is connected, we can go ahead and remove that. So remove all references to the, uh, to the Google API. Now, this is what we mean when we mean something is deprecated. So this line will come back and replace in just a moment. Remove location updates means maybe we're exiting the screen and we no longer want to ask for location. Request location updates means we've just entered the screen and we want to start requesting updates. So some changes there that we still need to make. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. I'll tell you, while I'm here, I'm going to clean up a little bit of, there we go, clean up a little commented code that's irrelevant, but nonetheless. Okay, now starting towards the top, what I'm going to do is declare a new attribute. So private fused location provider client. Uh, and then we'll simply call this one client. Uh, Alt enter to import. Now, forgive me, I, I realized earlier I might have said we were replacing uh, client with API. It's actually we're replacing Fuse Location Provider API with Fuse Location Provider Client, which is the newer the newer version. So forgive me, I just realized I might have swapped those a few moments ago when I was explaining this. But nonetheless, we're in good shape now. So I go down to my on create and I go down to right about the place where I did have the Google API magic before. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, client equals location services. And then we'll simply say get fused location provider client and pass in a reference of the current object just like so. So this is getting us a, a essentially an object of the fused location provider client type. Okay, we're looking pretty good there. A couple of things that we need to do. We need to associate this client with a callback. So uh, what I'll, uh, I'm going to make a new callback. I'm going to define it as an attribute or a field up above. So we'll say private, and then we'll say location callback. And we'll simply name this variable. Okay, I'll go ahead and import, and we'll name this location callback. Okay, like so. Now, down in the onCreate method, down around the place where we're doing a bit of logic here, uh, I'm going to say location callback equals new location callback, open curly, close curly, and then terminate with a semicolon. And now let's see what methods I have available to me. So you see there's an onLocationAvailability method. That just gives us a bit of information on whether we have GPS available. And then we're going to say on location result. Now, this is the important method on location result uh, because this handles the heavy lifting that we used to do when we had our location changed. So let me scroll down a little bit and find the logic that fired when our location was changed. And it is, I just need to do a quick search here. Whoop. Tell you what, we'll just do a quick search and we will look for longitude. Okay, here we go. This is an on location change method that we used under the old method. No longer need this, so I'm going to just remove like so. And uh, tell you what, I can go ahead and remove some of these on connection callbacks that we had as well. The request location updates we want to keep, but the others we're going to remove. Now, uh, go up here. And on connection suspended, we're going to go ahead. This is just a little bit of cleanup again. 
but uh, I no longer need some of these GPS uh, Google API client callback interfaces anymore. So we'll go ahead and clean those up and save. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and remove location listener, remove that guy as well and save and we're looking good. Okay. Now back to where I was, and forgive me for going on a little divergent topic there, but nonetheless, I'm going to go back to this new location callback. And in the on location result, I'm going to paste the logic that I previously had been doing a different way. Now you notice that location comes up funny because here the parameter that we're receiving is called location result. So let's change this to location result. And it's still not going to understand what get latitude is or get longitude. So let's say location result dot get last location dot get longitude, just like so. And now below, again, location result dot get last location and get latitude, again, just like so. And so far, things are looking pretty good. So we have our location callback, um, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, a couple things that we still need to clean up, though. We need to go back and clean up a couple of red lines where we're, okay, this, yeah, this guy we don't need. We can take this on connected out. So you see that changing to this new uh, fused location provider client is really cutting down on a lot of the manual work that we have to do in our code. So that's one we can remove. Now, request location updates. This one is still using the old Fuse Location API, and it's also referencing the Google API client, which we have removed. So we no longer need this line, but we do need the request location updates method. And just uh, to recall here, request location updates is invoked from a couple of places. First of all, from request permissions, when the user has allowed the permission, and also from some of the lifecycle methods. So on resume, we'll invoke a um, request location updates because it says, hey, we're coming back into our activity. Let's go ahead and resubscribe to location updates. Okay, nonetheless, uh, what we need to do here is access client. Remember who client is. Let me scroll up just a little bit and remember that. So client is this get fused location provider client that we instantiated on line 146 in our on create method. So we're going to start with client and we're going to say, guess what? Request location updates. And now what, do we, what comes into this request location updates? Let's go with the second signature. The first thing that we're going to get is a location request. Now what's the location request? Let's remember up above here, location request is where we say how quickly we want updates, how quickly we're willing to receive updates, and what kind of accuracy we want on, on those updates. So that remains unchanged, just like before. Now, the other thing that we need to specify is a location callback. Now, what's the location callback? Remember, that's this inner class that we made here, location callback, where we're receiving a new location result, and then we're reusing the logic that we used earlier with the Google API, where we're stopping our chronometer, resetting the chronometer, getting the latitude, longitude, and then updating the user's view as well. So this is where we tie the location callback to the location request, uh, sorry, the fused location provider client, and we tie it together with location request to say what our parameters are around um, the location data that we want to receive, how quickly and how accurate we want it to be. One more thing, we have to specify a loop. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the main looper. So get main looper. Uh, you could put it into a different thread if you want, but for our simple purposes, we'll, we'll keep it on this main thread here, just like so, and save. Now it gives a little warning here, a compile error, because uh, the call requires permissions that the user could reject. I've checked every path through here and I've verified that yes, uh, the user is indeed going to have to request permissions before getting to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and let that one go. It will run, uh, not a problem in our case. So I go down, looks like I have another one here. I have remove location updates. Now remove location updates, let's, let's scroll up a little bit. Notice the on resume lifecycle method tells us to request location updates and ask for security permission if needed. The on pause method says to remove location updates. So on resume is going to happen before our screen becomes visible. On pause will happen when our screen no longer is visible. So it's kind of like an open and closed door. We're making sure we're not still requesting updates even after the screen is closed. That would drain a lot of battery and take a lot of processing power. 
The remove location updates, once again, you see it's using this deprecated API and it's using this, uh, this Google API client, which we no longer need. So I'm gonna take that out. And once again, I'm simply going to say client, and then we're going to say remove location updates. And the, other th oh, the only thing you have to provide it in this case is that location callback. You say, I'm simply no longer interested in receiving location updates. So uh, probably good to do a quick check through our code, but at the end of the day, uh, everything we need is now in place. The on, on resume method is calling prep request, request location updates, which is requesting permission. After the permission has been, has been granted, we go to request location updates. That calls our new uh, get fused location provider client, and it marries together the location request with the parameters, uh, the speed and the accuracy that we want, the callback that's going to get invoked when location changes, and then the thread that it's going to run on. When our callback gets invoked, it's gonna stop the chronometer, update the display, and also update the internal data uh, about our latitude and longitude. So with that all said, let's take a look and see how it works. With the debugger running, we see the first screen is trying to render, and no surprise here, it's calling the onCreate method. So we'll step through this. I'm going to fast forward over the parts that we've already seen and focus a little bit more on what's new. So going down here, okay, uh, here's our location services request. Notice we just need to pass in that uh, reference to the current object. Now we're starting our callback. Now I'm going to choose F8 and you'll notice that it won't go to line 50, uh, but instead let me snap a breakpoint on line 151. So when we do get a location, we'll get notified in the debugger. So we step over, we create our location request. And at this point we're in pretty good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and choose F9. So you see the screen is still trying to render and now it's calling the onResume method where onResume is going to be invoked uh, after onCreate is part of the lifecycle. So we choose F8, we choose F7, and now we're going to see, has the user already granted this permission? Yes, the user already has. I've used the simulator before and I turned that uh, location permission on. So as I say, permissions are still the same between old and new model. You still have to do the dangerous permission check, uh, declare permissions, so on and so forth. None of that changes. Let's go ahead and go into request location updates. And you see here it's taking the step where it's saying, okay, uh, it, the file fuse location provider client, I want to request locations with these parameters, high accuracy and uh, the, the amount of time. And when I get a location that changes, call this callback, do all of this in the main thread. So we choose F9 and shortly after I choose F9, our screen should render here. I'll give it just a moment. There we go, our screen renders. Now look at one of the first things to happen is it invokes this on location result method from the callback almost immediately. Take a look at our current state. You see latitude and longitude are both zero, zero. So let me go ahead and say, okay, we're going to stop the chronometer and we're going to reset the chronometer. So the chronometer is this part here that gives us our GPS age, which can help us understand if the GPS is getting stale. Okay, now we get our, lo our longitude and our latitude and let's see what we got. So for longitude, minus 775, and for latitude, I believe I put it in as around 40, which puts us right around Manhattan, right around New York City. And F9, and then we come back, and we'll give this just a moment to refresh, and what we should see in just a moment is our latitude and longitude will update. Let me go back here, make sure I don't have any more uh, breakpoints set. Okay, and sure enough, uh, you see minus 77.5 and 40.0 and the GPS age updates there. Now we're getting another location update. Most likely just a minute has passed. Uh, what I'm going to do now though, is I'm going to go back to my emulator and let me put in a different latitude and longitude so that we can confirm that we are indeed receiving the new GPS locations with this new methodology. So latitude, we'll do 39.74 my own hometown again, Cincinnati, and longitude will do minus 84.51, and uh, again, longitude of Cincinnati, and then we hit send. We'll give it just a moment, and what our success criteria here is, is we see that latitude and longitude update. Now, it may take a moment because we've only requested updates every one minute, so let's just watch for this breakpoint to hit.
And after a few moments, the breakpoint break point does indeed hit. So we go ahead, and what's our longitude and latitude that we have here? We have longitude of minus 8451, and we have a latitude of 39.74. We're in the method right now, so it has not yet updated the UI. But let's go ahead and choose F9. And take a look, sure enough, minus 8451 and 3974. So I hope this video has been helpful. Of course, I will uh, commit and push this up to GitHub and put a link in the video comments. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.